there. I'm Jeannie Hancock, the Family Ministry Director at St. Luke's Kokomo. This week's Kingdom Kids lesson is about Jesus looking for his lost sheep. Jesus often taught truth through memorable parables. In the parable of the lost sheep, we find that Jesus loves and seeks out his people when we are lost. He'll always come looking for us over and over again. And when he finds us, he will forgive us and carry us home as all of heaven rejoices. Our Kingdom Kids are continuing to learn throughout the summer, which may look a bit different than previous summers. While we continue our in-person worship, we understand that many may choose to remain at home and watch our online worship experience. No matter what you choose, we will continue to provide weekly Kingdom Kids lessons on the Kingdom Kids Facebook page, as well as the St. Luke's Kokomo YouTube channel. This is a great chance for kids to learn and hear from their leaders, as well as watch their weekly message from our barn friends at Trackers of Faith. If you're worshiping in person with us today, enjoy the worship bag filled with tons of activities to keep the busiest kids engaged. And of course, enjoy the yummy snacks. And even though this lesson is geared towards our youngest members, it's also a perfect way for our adult members to learn more about Jesus and more about our kingdom kids. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of your worship. Well, good morning. What a great day to be able to gather and worship. And so we're so glad that you're here and worship. And if you're joining us online, welcome. I'm Scott Pattison. I have the privilege to be the lead pastor here, work with a great team. And so we're so glad that you're here. And whether you're in person or online, we invite you to check in. So you may grab your phone or your tablet or whatever device you may have. If you've got the church app, go on, check in. It's always nice to be able to do that. Or if you're online, we always enjoy those uh, commenting on the line to be able to say, hey, you're here, where you're from, and uh, just some of the different things. Some of you have told us what you're eating and who you're with. And, and we're, it's always a lot of fun to be able to just to gather in these unique ways, but yet as we're gathering for this time of worship, know that God's going to meet with us here, whether or not we're in person or whether or not we're gathered in a manner of being scattered in one of those ways, that God meets us in those times. We do have our resources as Jenny mentioned, with our Facebook page, our YouTube app, and the other uh, Facebook pages for our children and family ministries and our youth to be able to stay connected in, in these times. And so we invite you to do that. And so as we continue with our time of worship, today uh, is a great day that we really expect God to come. So if you're at home, feel free to grab your beverage and fill it up. And as we continue with our time, we come expecting to what God's going to do here. So hey, let's get started. We've been living in a spiritual haze, limiting our faith to church on Sundays. Some of us are so busy trying to win a fight that we have forgotten Jesus told us to be the light. The people of God are called to serve, though often we find ourselves reserved, unaware of the lost we pass by every day, not spreading the light, the truth, and the way. At times, our fears leave us frozen, stopping us from pursuing God's chosen. God gives us the strength every day to love those who have gone astray, lifting up the weak when we are strong, forgiving those who have done us wrong. The family of God makes a son out of the orphan. We stand up for those who have been forgotten. The people of God stand together in unity, finding strength in times of uncertainty. 
all of God's people have been set free. Together, we can live in victory. Amen. Good morning. We taught you a song last week, Go Church Arise. I said we were going to sing it again, so we're going to sing it again. If you remember it, let's uh, sing it loud. And if you're just hearing it for the first time, it's a simple melody line. You'll pick it up, okay? Let's arise, though, this morning. Let's stand. Let's sing, O Church Arise. now go into the Holy of Holies and go before our God in prayer. Most holy God, most righteous one, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving for all of the perfect gifts that you have given us. That there is nothing that you have, have sent our way that is not wonderful and perfect. And we thank you. We want to offer our prayers today for um, people all over the world who are suffering from this coronavirus. We pray especially for an end to it. We ask you to just snuff it out. We ask you to remove it from the face of the earth, that anything that um, even looks like it, you know, that as mutates from it, that um, might come after it, that you would stop it and cut it off before it would have any effect on our nation or on our world. And we pray especially for those who are uh, suffering from it right now, who are in hospitals, who are in nursing homes, and who are even in their homes uh, suffering greatly. And we ask that you remove 
all of the, the sickness and, and the symptoms from their bodies. And we ask for healing and peace as they recover. Lord Jesus, I just want to come to you today also and ask that you would teach us how to pray, that we, we sometimes stumble and we don't know exactly what we're supposed to do, but we ask that you would teach us to pray. Teach us to pray like you did when you went up to a high mountain to um, get away from the crowds and the people, to be with the Father and to pray. And then teach us how to pray like you did in the Garden of Gethsemane when you were about to be crucified the next day. Teach us how to pray when you said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And Lord, yes, teach us how to pray. We say it with your disciples there in your word. Teach us how to pray, Lord. We don't know how. We want to learn how to pray better. Teach us how to pray. And then you taught them that wonderful prayer that, that we pray weekly. But Lord, would you just open that up to us and open us up to it in such a way that we pray it with more sincerity than we ever have before. And so we come to you right now and we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. These have been challenging times, but the body of Christ has proven itself resilient. We've gathered in different ways, in different places, yet stood steadfast as the church. We have found peace in God's promise to never leave us or forsake us. In our separation, we have remained united. In our struggle, we have lived out our faith in the midst of the unknown, we have leaned on the strength of an all-knowing God. Throughout history, the church has thrived in adversity, and this moment is no different. The power of God is unstoppable, His love unending, His grace unrelenting, His glory undeniable. Today, no matter where we gather, we remain God's people. Our mission has not changed. Our calling has not been altered. And nothing, absolutely nothing, will ever change that. We are the church, and today we stand resilient. We are the church, and we do stand resilient. And what we do know is in this season, God has been stirring and doing a number of other things. And, and this, this message today, after just spending about 10 plus weeks in Ephesians, where we're just unpacking and walking through the, the book of Ephesians and just expositorily walking and unpacking, today's going to feel very, very different. And so it's really what I call a one-off Sunday, but it's actually leading into other pieces. And it's been interesting because as, I, as we've been sitting around the staff table, every now and again they'll go, what do you mean? 
by that word or that phrase. So we've been learning each other's language. And what I mean by a one-off is, we, you know, we, you're in a series, and then you, you have a Sunday that's kind of a standalone Sunday. It's not a part of a series, its own message. And, and so this is one that's actually kind of a one-off, a standing alone, but it's actually reaching forward. And we'll talk a little bit about that going forward. And so uh, those of you online, you can download the sermon notes. And, you're, and actually, our sermon notes are going to be a little different today. And if you're here, um, I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to ask later into the message, and, but feel free to jot some notes down when we look at that. Uh, but, because, but we're going to be looking at God's 2020 vision. A couple of months ago, um, in my devotional time, I was spending time thinking, and a lot of memes on Facebook were about how 2020 is horrible. You know, you see the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with the peanut butter and jelly on the outside of the bread, and the, un, you know, are together, or the meme from Back to the Future when they go, don't go to 2020, year 2020. And, and you know, we talk about you know, this is one of those years we all wanted to try to get out of 2019 and look what we got into. And, and it's just one of those really weird years. And it hit me, what if 2020 is really God's vision for the church? What if in this season God is stirring us for something down the road? And, and so we're looking at what does all of that mean and it was out of a time that through our get acquainted gatherings, so we've been here just a little over a year as pastor and people, and so during the get acquainted gatherings, we met in people's homes, and we just asked a series of questions. Help me to learn your story. I shared a little bit about my story, gave a chance to ask questions. We had just sat down uh, as a congregation, and we're talking about what's going on with the denomination and some of the shifts that are happening, and, and for those of you that are wondering, uh, everything's still where it was. It just got pushed back about a year, and so our general conference was supposed to happen in May of 2020. It's actually going to happen at the end of August 1st of September in 2021. And so that conversation has kind of been put on hold, but everything's still moving down that road. And, and what does a new expression look like? What will the old post-separation United Methodist Church look like? That's still happening. How we do our annual conference is very different. But we were having these conversations as a congregation, and we were sensing, you know, what is our next, and what is God going to do? And, and all of a sudden, we had... COVID hit. I, I remember when we were, it was March 15th, and it was our last Sunday, should we gather or not? We chose to gather. We were in a series called Habits, and that habit that week was worship. And I said, you know, worship, God is always the object. But I wonder if in the middle of this, and, and, and all the way through time, our methodology must always adapt and change, as it has historically. And I said, God is always going to be the object of our worship, but our methods of worship are going to have to change and may change. Little did I know that week, literally that week, how we worship changed exponentially and significantly because we couldn't worship together. The world was shut down. And we adapted and we uh, adjusted. So today, I just want to let you know, we're still having a congregational conversation. And today is still part of that conversation. And so what you have as a handout is one of those tools. And I'll share with you a couple of other ways to be a part of that conversation. And so we're looking at what is God's 2020 vision for us? And, and what does that look like? And and. and all of that. And so we were away to Tennessee in an amazing cabin, had a creek next to it. And, and when we got a chance to get away in February, uh, it was the Sunday. We, we chose not to go to some of the churches around. We said, we're in God's amazing sanctuary. We're just going to worship here at the creek. So we had a fire, we had communion, and we just sat and talked and prayed, Anita and I. And over that weekend, there were a couple of passages of Scripture that came, and, and it hit me that Sunday morning as we were there, I told Anita, I said, you realize today, today is the anniversary of the announcement that we would be coming to St. Luke's. So that's interesting, just an interesting coincidence, or was it? Because the scriptures that God was giving to us were very interesting as we were just kind of going, 
wow, where, and we were reflecting a year and, and, and what, what was going on in that year and what was God doing and what would God do and, and what was God's plan in putting us together as pastor and people. And this is one of the passages of Scripture that we were given that weekend, and it said, for I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I'll create rivers in the dry wasteland. So here we are with this babbling creek pushing through next to us and, and enjoying that and just kind of going, well, that's, that's interesting. You just kind of, what, what does that have? I love how the Amplified says it just slightly different. He says, listen carefully. Lean in and listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And I thought, well, that's, that's fascinating. On the anniversary of the announcement that we would come here, we were just kind of going, okay, God, what is it you would have, and, and why are we here, and what is that? And we had a chance to just kind of get away and stop and, and reflect. Little did we know... All of us, little did we know, within a month, the world would shift. Now, what's been interesting is the last 10 years or so, those who have been watching the church have just said, we're about to enter into another tectonic shift, that the same shift that happened when the Gutenberg Press came. The church made an expon exponential shift with the Gutenberg Press because now they could print the Bible, and the Bible would be in everybody's hand. But they've been talking about this thing called the Internet. I don't know if you've heard about it, but the, the Internet and how the things are going to change the church, and it's like, Internet's not going to change the church. You know, the Internet's something that we do email on, we do some shopping on, we can check Facebook, we can do some of that. But how's the Internet going to change the church? And all of a sudden, within the last few months, everything shifted. And that was our lifeline, that was our connection, that was the way we could interact. And now we're having meetings on Zoom. I did a funeral on Zoom. I've been doing premarital counseling with a couple I'm marrying this coming weekend. I've been doing premarital on Zoom. And some of you have been doing family gatherings on Zoom. And, and many of you have had too many work meetings on Zoom. But, but you know, it's one of those crazy pieces that we kind of, this thing off to the side now becomes a vital piece in what we do. And all of a sudden, we're seeing these exponential shifts. And so one of the things we were doing in the middle of all of this would sit down in our staff meetings and we would just kind of go, how are you? You know, we're, we're, we weren't sure what was happening, so that was always a connect. And we did staff meeting on Zooms for a while and then we like, should we get back together in person? Should we? Is that going to be safe? Can we do that? You remember those moments where you're like trying to figure out what that looks like before we ask whether we could gather, you know, we're just like, can we even be together and is it safe and, and all that that means. And, and so I invited the staff to sit up here and they're going to help me preach the sermon today. And they're not coming up here now, they're going to be up here electronically because we gathered up here as we had with our staff meetings. And I said, you know, we just trying to figure out every week, and we are rushing through, and it's easy just to keep moving forward. But I think it's important for us to stop. One, just to kind of take our breath, and we're in that kind of recoup time. But I said, we learned some things, and we felt some nudges, and if we don't stop and ask the question, it would be easy just to keep blowing through. And so I invited them, and it was a 30-minute conversation. We just sat up here and talked, and we edited it down to about 13 minutes. Um, and the sound, those of you particularly online, you're going to go, what's wrong with my sound? Nothing's wrong with your sound. Uh, Bruce did a wonderful job trying to capture the sound, and, and we, as we edit it down, it'll go high and low. Some pieces will cut out. That was a video thing. And, and so if you're online, um, don't worry about your sound. It's not the sound. It's, it's not your device. Now, the other thing I want to let you know, and, and those here, I'm going to post it on Facebook and I'm going to post it on YouTube so you can go back and listen to it. So, so don't feel like you've got to try to grab every word. You'll have the opportunity to go back. But I thought it was important for one, as a staff, for us to go, what did we learn? But the other thing that I want to invite you to do is, 
what is God doing with you? Because I know, as I've talked to some of you, God's been stirring in you, and you've been asking that question, and you've been stirred, and you have some hunches, and we're going to grab into that. And so I want this to invite you to go back to those moments, because it's easy just to move through. And so we just are going to pause. I'm going to invite you into our conversation and, and just as we reflected, and then we're going to come back and give you some ways to continue to stir and discern what God is doing, because I really believe that we're in those moments that God is doing a work. And so I invite you to listen in to our staff conversation, and, and it was just a lot of fun to be able to, to connect with that. And so here's some thoughts that we had as we shared together. I just want to take some time to gather. Um, this is something we've kind of done as we've started our staff meetings and it's spent time just kind of reflecting. Each week was adapt and adjust and reflect, adapt and adjust and reflect. And wanted to take a few moments just for us to sit around and, and have a conversation to capture for us to think back and allow the, the congregation and those listening in uh, to hear a little bit of our reflections. And so just want to start with, what are some of your general reflections of this season, the last couple of months? I mean, there's been a lot moving, and we've just have been adapting, and you guys have done amazing, and I'm so uh, pleased with where we are, proud of each and every one of you. Um, but, but gosh, as we kind of pause and look back, uh, we're like dust is settling, we're tired, we're recouping, uh, adjusting. What are some of your general reflections over the last season that we've been in? I know I've been amazed at the people that we're able to reach that we hadn't been able to before. There was a sense of everything shutting down and yet being so busy. It was like there were two ends of the spectrum and there wasn't much in between. I don't know if any of the rest of you felt that way or not. There was, there was this go, 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 we've got to get this done and then you go home and you should. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was just, that was different. I mean, it's, I mean it's, it, and we're still there a little bit. I think we're just adapting. Yeah. I think with me, it's been that everything is different. Like, my job has been different. I don't get the face to face interaction with the kids that I used to get. It's, it's changed, and it's, it's, disheartening in a way because I miss the kids, but yet we've learned new ways to actually communicate with each other by Zoom, and we've learned how to do things via social media that I never would have delved into before. Yeah. Well, I don't think those things, we didn't know they were possible. Even some of the things that we've done, we weren't even really aware that they were an option or that they were something that could be done. And we had to master Bruce to be able to adjust the technology. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed uh, learning all the new technology of streaming and how to put lyrics on top of live video. And, uh, it's increased the number of hours a week that I need to work on worship, but I, I've enjoyed every minute. We had to rethink the... Um, the elements of worship, what defines worship, and how how are we going to facilitate our people um, in the midst of this, and how are we going to communicate with them, and how are we going to reach all of them, whether they're tech savvy or not. Um, but the elements of worship, why do we come together, and how, what can we still provide, even though we can't, couldn't at first be together in person. I think one of the things was, as far as worship is concerned, is that we were always so concerned about putting on the show on Sunday morning. And we had to learn that, hey, we don't have this perfect. We may, we may need technically a couple more weeks to learn something, but we put it out there and we did everything we could to try to reach the people that were here and the people that, that are out there. Yeah. We had to stay positive because everything else was so hard. Everything else was so uncertain and so they kind of made that our team that we would take care of one another and we would talk to each other and, and we would keep the doors open communication between us because 
We didn't know what the heck else was going on in the rest of the world, but we had control, so to speak, over what we're doing here. So it was nice to be able to come to a, a smaller community of people that I knew I could lean on. Uh, if I made a mistake, I could get some grace for that. We, we just took it all in stride and a lot of laughter, a lot of, I think, fun. Of a lot of silly text. Yeah. <laughs> So what, from your perspective, is one gift or one thing God has gifted St. Luke's in this season? Change. Change. The ability to learn how to change. In all of us, staff, leadership, congregation. Yeah. I think it's fun to see how people have stepped up who actually had no interest in Zoom or Facebook or anything, and yet they got on board with the help of maybe children or grandchildren or whatever it took <clears throat> so that they could be connected. Well, one other thing I see is that since so many people had so much free time, you know, a, a lot of people spent that free time with the church volunteering for different things. And so uh, we've, we've just seen so many wonderful things happening around here, you know, as far as fixing up the church and sanctuary and restrooms and everything. <laughs> so, it was, and, and it was nice to see those people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He needs to see the way the congregation is stay connected by calling each other and checking on each other, and that's, that's the nice thing. They can't be face to face. You can talk that kind of yeah, the church has been the church. It hasn't been, you know, hey, you as a staff, you've got to do this. And then they go, no, we're the church. We're going to call. We're going to care. Mm -hmm. It's the gift of time. I don't know how we would have done the gift. Trying to do two jobs or, or ministry, that we, you know, just with things in motion, how would we have had these conversations? How would we have gotten the things done that we've, we've done? We were so intentional about talking before doing the thing and then talking after and without that time, you know, I, it, it wouldn't have been nearly impossible or have been constant emails and there would have been miscommunication and something lost and we just wouldn't have been on the same page. Yeah. I think uh, more of our people became involved in the actual um, worship service in the ways of like scripture reading and um, Prayer offsite, <laughs> and um, just the different ways where you have these cameo clips, you know, of different ones doing different things, and I that was I liked that. Some, uh, you know, as far as away as Florida, mm -hmm. sending that in, yeah, and then the comments that come in when we're live streaming, you know, and you see people in um, Oklahoma or Florida mm -hmm. or you know different places in the country who mm -hmm. were connected to. Lives and, and to them, so it's good to hear from them. I have a friend who has thanked me, well, two friends who have thanked me profusely for sharing our message every week because um, at least one of them turns around and shares it immediately. And she's not from our church, she's out there in the community, she's a business person, but she just loves being able to be with us on Sunday mornings or whenever she gets around to watching us. As much as we talk about the building not being the object, the building looks great. We've got some areas that have been transformed. Yeah. Look awesome. They, they, uh, they're clean, they're modern, they're, they're in full working order. And I just I love going to those new spaces and checking out the work that's been done. So. Yeah, yeah. So what might God be nudging? What are some of the nudges? Well, I can foresee new fruit of, of our ministry and uh, New freedom to minister where haven't before it will bring new people to new people to help, new people to minister to, and God will be glorified in, in the new things that He's added to us. I think in terms of when we look at like our children, our youth, and our family ministries, I think it's allowed us to put the discipleship into the hands of parents. Um, it's given us the tools to do it, it's given us the need to do it, because we physically can't be with them, so we've been able to create things and do things that give them the tools 
so that parents can meet. Even, even with it being the online service, I've seen people on Sunday morning that, you know, families are busy. Even in this time when everything's canceled mostly, they're still busy. And to be able to get on as a family in their pajamas on Sunday morning and watch as opposed to going, oh, it's my only day to sleep in, you know, it's just providing those who um, who need reach. Yeah. yeah, I feel like God gives us the, the big overall vision and direction, but we get to work out the details. We can choose to, to write the script this way, or we can do it this way, and we may end up in the same spot. Um, but that doesn't matter as long as we do it. We can also choose to not do it. And we can choose to go back and be stuck. We can, we can get stuck in where we were, and if we do that, um, that's us wanting to go back to the familiar. We don't have to anymore. We can we can dream and we can think uh, what's possible. Um, we've talked a lot about having that online population. They are now part of our church. We may never see them on Sunday morning, but we may see a like on Facebook or a view on YouTube, and they're as much a part of the statements as somebody who sits in a pew. And, and now we've thought, how do we reach those folks? How do we include them? Yeah. Um, Maybe it's not all about the physical attendance. It's not because we weren't allowed to have physical attendance. So um, thinking in those terms too, thinking in how we measure success, you know, is it is it going to be these old ways or are we going to dream up new ways and still make disciples? That was the command. He didn't give us a roadmap to say, you know, here's your online presence, here's your social media, here's your giving through the church center app. <laughs> here's, here's all you can do. And it's frustrating, but it's also a lot of freedom. It's a lot of autonomy that God gives us. To, that's why we have gifts, and that's why we have different minds and hearts. So. Rather than a nudge, I feel like we've been catapulted <laughs> into, um, into using new technologies. And we're fortunate enough to have Boku engineers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in the congregation, so you know we can call call on them to figure stuff out to, yeah. to get us there. One of the things I've noticed too is that it's allowed our people to see that even though there are things that are different, the message of God's word, the message that we're providing on Sunday morning is still the same. That's right. Um, That's right. Yeah. So I think you know you know like Joe talking about you know. Jesus gave us a commandment to go out and make disciples. He did not specifically tell us to get on YouTube and Facebook and that stuff was not there, but he, he is providing us with tools in order to do that and in order to um, still get his message out there and, and make it relevant in today's world. Yeah. And if he used those words, I'm pretty sure it would have been lost in the translation. <laughs> yeah. I have a favorite quote from Elizabeth Elliot. If you don't know who she was, she, her husband was martyred in the jungle in the 50s. But, um, and she became a, a spokesperson for the body of Christ, to the body of Christ. But um, one of her things was, um, when you don't know what to do, just do the next, and you don't know God's will, just do the next thing. And I think that that's how we've operated, and I think that that's how it's going to be down the road. Do the next thing. We all just could not feel like there are people who have dreams, have ministries that are maybe they've been waiting for the right time, or um, people are wanting to slow down and phase out when somebody wants to phase in, or, or some, somebody wants to start something, or uh, this is the time to dream, and this is the time to, to step forward and do the best thing to Well, again, I have appreciated serving in this season with you all. As you can tell, we had a lot of fun and we've learned a lot. <clears throat> and we're continuing, <clears throat> excuse me, we're continuing to go, God, what is that next? And Proverbs 29, 18 talks about where there is no vision, which means the revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained, but happier and blessed are he who keeps the law of the Lord. We have definitely have seen as a culture right now a lot of unrestrainedness happening, but, but where do we get the revelation of God, and what does that mean for us? The New, Trans, the New Living Translation says, But when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. 
And so what is that vision that God has for us? What is the revelation that God has for us moving forward? Now, one of the passages of Scripture I've used with our leadership, I've used it a couple of times, and it's one sentence of Scripture that I think is fascinating because it's one sentence out of the books of Chronicles, but I think it's powerful, and I think it's timely for where we are. The New Living Translation says, From the tribe of Issachar there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times, and they knew the best course for Israel to take. You know, it's one thing to kind of read your culture and to read what's going on, but then it's quite another one to go, but what's the best route? What's the best way to navigate that? The New Revised Standard says it's slightly different. Of Issachar, those who had understanding of the times and to know what Israel ought to do, there were 200 chiefs and all the kindred of their commands. And so we're in a season where we're going, what is that going forward? I came across this quote a while back, and it was really meaningful for where I was in that moment, but it seems so appropriate for where we are as a culture and, and maybe even where we are as a church. What feels like an end is often a beginning. And, and when we think about, you know, will 2019 normal ever happen again? Probably not. And so some of what we're dealing with is even grief to go, the world has changed, we had nothing to say about it, and we're living in the effects of it. But I believe God is still in control. And so this is really helpful just to kind of go, okay, what is that new beginning? And so the key is we want to hear from God. We want to hear from God, and I believe that I'm not the only one who hears from God. I know for a fact you hear from God. We've talked, we've shared, we've been a part of that congregational conversation. So today, today is a prime the well sermon. Y'all remember the old farm hand pumps where you have a jar of water and you got to take the jar of water or a pitcher of water and you got to wet the leathers and the leather has to swell and then it has to create a suction and you finally get the water coming up. Well, today I want to prime the well. We were in a conversation and that we were paused. So I want to revisit that, kind of wet the leathers again, and just to kind of go, hey, we want to continue the conversation of what's happening and what is God doing with us. As a denomination, that conversation is still happening. We're still monitoring all of that. But, but more importantly, Locally, what does that look like? And so here are some ways I want to invite you to be a part. And so there's a couple of ways that, that I want to invite you to, to be a part of the hearing and then sharing what you're hearing and a part of that conversation. So out in the lobby, I put a table, eight-foot table, with a timeline on that table. And I want to invite you either to go to the timeline and write on that paper or on your notes, there's a couple of questions that you're able to write on there or, you know, go on, uh, send me an email or, or write it out if, if you want to sit down at your computer and write a couple of pages, however you want to do that. If it's write a few sentences out on the paper, on the butcher paper, or if you want to share we, we truly want to hear from you. So what I have on this timeline are just some watershed moments. They're just kind of high marks just to kind of give us a point of where we are. So in 1885, Marian Woodworth, she's now known as Marian Woodworth Etter, but in the moment it was Maria Woodworth, she had a revival in Kokomo. She had a revival all over the United States. And in her book, she talks about coming to Kokomo in, 19, or in 1885 and there was a group of people out of that that got saved. The move of God moved in them, and they called themselves the Daniel Band. And, and part of our Methodist tradition, we know that bands are, are part of that small group experience. So it was a group of people that God stirred in their heart, and they created a small group. And then out of that small group, they created a church. And then in 1900, they go... It's okay for us to have a church, but we really need to be a part of a bigger community, a bigger body. And so they approached the United Brethren Church and the, the local district superintendent of the United Brethren Church, and they said, hey, um, can we be a part of you guys? Because we know when we need to have a pastor and when we need to go through some of this, we need to be a part of a bigger organizational structure. And so then they build a church downtown. 
And we have pictures of it in the hallway, and, and, and we have, some of us have mugs on one side with one church and then another picture on the other side. And so that was in the 1900s up to about 1946. And then in 1946, the United Brethren Church and the Evangelical Association merged denominations, and they became what's known as the EUB, or the Evangelical United Brethren. Now, what's interesting is... I met somebody, I have a very, very good friend who's a part of the Evangelical Association. I said, I didn't know that existed anymore. And they go, yeah, we didn't want to join. So, they, they, so there's a part, every merger, there's a part that says, yeah, we don't want to play. And, and others that said, hey, we're going to be a part. And so they became a part of the EUB. Now, some of you grew up, this church is an, out of the EUB strain. Anita's home church is out of the EUB strain. So, so you know the 46, um, and depending on whether you're from the United Brethren or the Evangel Evangelical Association, with your home church. I came out of the Methodist tradition. My dad was a Methodist. Now, before they moved to the other side of Gas City, he went to the Christian church. But then they moved to the other side of town, and he goes, and then we became Methodist. You, you know how that, that's usually how it goes. I, I can't get to the other side of town because I got to walk, but this church is closer. And, and I know for some of you, that's how your story, that's how you became what you were. You, you grew up in it or you moved and, and that church was closer. You know, they didn't drive 30 minutes to go to church back then. And, and so you had the merger in 1946. And now with this particular congregation, in 1960, they made a vote to leave a historic building downtown. And there was this plot of land that was on the southwest edge of town. And they made a choice to move from downtown to this piece of dirt that we're in right now. And in 1963, they, they dedicated the new church that's on the other side of the lobby to the glory of God and the service of God. And, and, and what's amazing is when I've walked around this building, there was a great deal of care to be very current to make the needs. Who had a gym? Very few churches had a gym back then. We built a gym. We built this fun circular building. We could have just built a box. We didn't build a box. We built a lot of unique things. We were cutting edge in the 60s on purpose, moving from... I, I pastored a church that chose not to leave a historic building to go out to the edge of town where the things were growing. That was a courageous step that this congregation made. And, and then in 1968... The EUB's bishop approached the Methodists and they said, hey, you guys want to join forces, and the EUB's and the Methodists merged. Now, what's interesting, some churches are still ticked off about the 46 merger, let alone the 68 merger. And some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so in 1968, we became what's now known as the United Methodist Church. And now here we are in another watershed moment that we're going, what does that mean? Is there a new expression of Methodism that's being birthed? And, and, and what is the post-protocol or the old version going to look like? And we're in another moment as a denomination to look at what does that look like. But, but I believe we're also in a moment as a church. What does that look like? In 1983, when we burned the mortgage for the building that's on the other side of the lobby, one week later, y'all said, hey, we're not done. And literally a week after the burning of the mortgage, you were here, some of you, said, we're packing them in, three in, and, and that's rough, and we believe that God's called us to do something. Two years later, we built this building. And this isn't a square box. And one of the things that I continue to be amazed at, you didn't just build a box and go, okay, we're going to call it a church. You did a lot of hard work, a lot of hard prayer, and said, but how can we be unique and culturally current and relevant in the moment? And you were. And so as we look at that, I believe we're at another moment in time. Here we are in 2020. And, and I, I, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just kind of blowing smoke. I really believe that we're in one of those moments that we're going to look back in time. And this is one of those moments, definitely as a denomination, potentially as a local congregation, that we're going to look back and go, this is a watershed moment. 
that we've got to pray through and make some very interesting, potentially courageous decisions. I don't know what that looks like yet, but I just sense God is stirring something. And, and as I've talked with some of you, you're feeling that same as well. And, and as I just know a little bit about your history, our history, I'm excited because I know this is a church that prays about it. And this is a church that doesn't just make a decision. They make good decisions. They make God decisions. And we're in that moment to kind of go, God, what are you up to? And, and so two questions I want to invite you to think about. And so the first part from 2020 down to 1885, where have you seen or experienced God while at St. Luke's? And so write it in there on the timeline, write the date, and, and let me know where you see God. Because what I do know is, as I've heard your story, and as I know the story of this church, God has moved. It's birthed out of revival, but God has moved historically, wonderfully through the years. And, and your faith has been a part of that. Now, I also know some of you had God stories outside of St. Luke's. Those are important, too. And I want to hear those. But, but particularly as we're just kind of going, where, where is God going? I, I, we want to go kind of, where, where are we just sensing that? The second question I want you to do is, as we go to 2020 and moving forward, now some of you are thinkers and some of you are feelers. And so if I were to go, where do you think? The feelers are like going, I don't think I feel. Now if I were to go, where do you feel? Some of you thinkers are going, oh, I don't feel, I think. So I've covered you all. Where do you think or feel or sense however you get there? <laughs> Use your words that God is leading or asking or stirring St. Luke's to follow or to go in the future. Because I believe over the last few months, God's been stirring us. And just like when, if I not, didn't pause and go, hey, staff, we've been, gone through a lot, and God has been revealing stuff to us, if I never stopped to ask the question, you wouldn't get a chance to, one, get a window into what was happening behind the black curtain and behind all of those things. But more importantly, what those lessons that God is teaching us. But I want to invite you, because I also know, as I've talked to some of you, God has been stirring in you, and we need to hear it. Because I don't think I'm the only one that God talks to. I believe that God is talking to all of us. And, and just as God has done from 1885 all the way up to today, God has stirred in the people. Whatever we call ourselves and have called ourselves historically, God's called us and God has stirred us. And, and this congregation has come together, prayed about it, and made God decisions to make an impact in our community and in our world. And we're in one of those moments because the world has shifted. We're in a tectonic shift, and we're trying to go, how do we stay firmly, firmly rooted in our DNA and in our past, but also to go, how do the methods change? Because our methodologies change. I think that's what I shared at the 9 o'clock service. I said that's one of the things I'm most excited that we're starting a traditional service in this season. Because for some... Those, those pieces of how we've worshipped since the 1500s continue to speak to people's hearts, and we need to continue to offer that. But there are other things beyond worship and along with worship that God is stirring us to do. And so we're inviting you in, I'm inviting you in to that time to just to go, what are you hearing, and please share it with us. The other thing that I want to invite you to do is set your phone. So get your phone out, go to the alarm section on the clock, or if you have an alarm on your phone, set, set a 10.02. And we're going to do a 10.02 prayer time over the course of whenever, over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months. And 10.02 is based on Luke 10.02. It says, the Amplified says, He was saying to them, the harvest is abundant, for there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation, but the worker, those available to proclaim the message of salvation, are few. Therefore, prayerfully ask the Lord of the harvest to send the workers to the harvest. We could sit around. We have smart people here, amazingly smart people. I've been so blessed by being here in this season because you guys are amazing. But I want to do more than just make good decisions. I want to make God decisions. 
And the thing I do know is you want to make God decisions too. And, and so if we're praying about it, Paula is going to be leading us in some prayer exercises over the course of time uh, just to continue to snatch what God is speaking to us and inviting you to be able to pray. But this is just one simple way every day. Set your alarm at 10.02. Go, Lord, you tell us the harvest is a plentiful, but the workers are few. Send, send them. It, just a sentence prayer or however you want to say this passage of Scripture. So I invite you to pray Luke 10 to every day at 10.02, and just see what God stirs. And then if you hear something, text me, send me an email, let us know, or somebody on the staff, because as a staff, we've been in that discerning process, and we continue to be in that time, and we want to invite you, I want to invite you into that time just to go, God, what would you have? Now, next week, we're going to start a series called The Kingdom, and we're going to take four weeks looking at the kingdom of God. So the book of Ephesians was looking at the church, priming the well today with what is it God has been stirring in us since the beginning of 2020? What's God's 2020 vision? And then we're going to continue to go, what does it mean to be about the kingdom? And what is the kingdom? And in the middle of that, as you're feeling stirred, write them down, send us texts, send us emails and to see what God is doing in this time. And together, not only will we get through this, but I believe, and I truly believe this, you've heard me say it before, I believe our best days are not behind us. I firmly believe our best days are before us. But I also know it may not look like we have since 1885. But what I also know is since 1885, we have made some very unique courageous pointed decisions at very critical moments and we're at one of those moments again that we get to ask of god and get a step into that and i'm excited to be able to be here and to do it with you i don't know what god's going to do but i get to do it with you and we get to do this together and to see what god is doing in this moment to continue to make a difference in our community and in our world let's pray god we thank you we thank you that you move and that you speak. And sometimes we can get so busy and so distracted. So, Lord, forgive us. But, Lord, as a congregation, we want to intentionally be in conversation with each other, but most importantly, be in conversation with you. Lord, we've sought to be faithful to you since 1885 when people's hearts were stirred in a revival as they chose to align themselves with organizations and denominations. And Lord, in this season, we want to be about what you're about. And so, Lord, we want to be about your ideas and to live that out. So, Lord, speak, lead. I'm so grateful for our staff, for our leadership that wants to continue to, to be about what you're about. Lord, this is your church. And we want to celebrate the saving grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to be about that. So, Lord, lead us and stir us and guide us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we sing, I just wanted to mention that we put a, a comment online, and it's been a few weeks now. It's been more than a few weeks. And we just asked if you, there were some songs you wanted to sing. And so uh, Vicki said she wanted to sing Family of God. Uh, so here we are. We're going to sing uh, The Family of God. And if you think about what a family means, about inclusion and about love and about the communication that Pastor Scott talked about, the invitation to join God's family is more than just joining a church body, more than just coming to a certain place on Sunday morning. It's about uh, accepting his love and being in a community of people who love each other equally and uh, are there for one another. So uh, let's stand together and let's sing the family of God. And again, this is for this is Vicky's request.
up, I do want to offer the opportunity. We have our prayer team down here that uh, we heard from some of you that you would, in this season, just would love to have some prayer time. And so we're being very appropriately cautious in, in how we do our praying so you can be know that it's a safe way to pray. But our prayer team's down front. If you could use some additional prayer today or let us know online and we'll connect with you so we can pray with you online. But as we have gathered in this form of how we've gathered, it's time to be scattered to make a difference in the world. So let's go make a difference for the kingdom and the family of God. There are those out there that want to belong to something more than just what they're a part of. Let's go make a difference and let people know the love of God.